I'll, I'll, I'll let the audience in on a little secret. Um, I am a recovering banker. Thank you for laughing. <laughs> I laughed. Right. I'm a recovering banker. I, there's a support group and everything. You can join us. Um, I was a banker for 17 years. I was head of retail bank in three countries uh, in the region. And, and, and so, you know, maybe, gentlemen, you can comment on this. You, first of all, if you can introduce yourself and speak a bit about your company and your direction. But then can you talk to me about the role of banks? Is the role of banks decreasing in the remittance space? And, and Nabil, maybe we can start with you. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Nabil ben Aisam. Uh, CEO of Nexus Network, and uh, we operate multiple payment processing companies in the region. Um, in Qatar, we're QPay, we're Nexus in uh, UAE and other markets. Um, we focus primarily on the SMEs, and we service the low-end um, clients uh, that work for the SMEs. So we uh, have, I'd say, half a million or more uh, cardholders that are uh, low-wage and banked uh, employees in the region and growing. Uh, and um, we take a different approach, so we don't lead with the remittance product, as the gentleman before was, was here. We lead more with trying to bank the unbanked, and once we, we bank them and service them, then we see other opportunities to offer them remittances, although right now we charge zero for remittance services in our, in our markets. Pramod. Thank you. My name is uh, Pramod Mangat. I'm the Group C of UA Exchange. Uh, we are the second largest uh, player in money transfer in terms of market share, handling $30 billion every year annually, uh, covering 45 markets directly and covering almost 150 countries across the globe. Uh, the way we look at it uh, on the uh, role of banks on remittances, I will say, I don't want to use the word decreasing, but I would like to use the word the friend from TransferWise mentioned about is about reinventing the role of remittance because in the sharing economy, we feel that the role of the bank is coming out of merely an intermediary role or as a spoke in, in the whole network of things. Because increasingly we see that the swift uh, workflow as the front showed, this is what we have experienced that the whole thing in terms of the whole workflow is getting much more streamlined, much more easier because the fintechs, the new age uh, companies have really find a way to make it much more easier, cheaper and much more effective as well. And for instance, uh, we itself have experienced that, for example, like to one of the largest market that we serve is India, uh, where we handle $8 billion every year. Not so long back, around six years back, it used to take 24 to 72 hours to place money. We launched a product called Flash Remit in 2011, where currently our 60% remittances happen through this product. It happens instantaneous, uh, real time online. So that's where we have uh, helped to take the cost out the value is uh, across past the chain, and end of the day, it passes it to the customer. I think as long as banks embrace this uh, change, I think you are on the game. Okay, okay. So that, that, I think that leads well into my next question. There are, uh, here in the region, every country in this region, I would argue, is overbanked. There are way too many banks here. There are, uh, in, in, in your space, Pramod, there's um, many players in the remittance uh, space in the exchange house uh, area. Um, is there a need for, for new players in the remittance space? Because today we've heard so many different companies, dynamic companies who are offering new technologies and solutions. Yeah, welcome, welcome. Um, uh, you know, who are offering new technologies and new opportunities for customers. But do we need any new players in this space? I think the role of the players is changing. For example, now, the, the, look, at, look at the remittance. Specifically, two, three things which we see really emerging out has been the uh, significant importance of data. So I think you need uh, uh, experts who can come and really help you in looking at the data. Or even looking at some of the technology which you're talking about it specifically. One other thing which now we are working on specifically on KYC as well as on settlement is the use case of blockchain. So we, we work with uh, uh, players like that who can really go and change those kind of things. And also regulatory wise because the regulators are quite open when you go and talk about some of the new technology, which it's there. So you don't have to go and you know, reinvent the whole wheel, but you can go exactly understand who is the right partner for that. So the, the flavor and the nature of the players coming in is changing. It's not the erstwhile legacy player is coming into that new market. Nabil, do you want to touch on that? Yeah, before I answer, though, I, let's, let's take a show of hands. How many bankers do we have in the room? Come on, don't be shy. Raise your hand. I mean, that, okay, how many, how many exchange houses or MTOs do we have? Okay, and how about FinTech? 
All right, cool. All right, so I, I'll share our experience, which is kind of good. It looks like we have a, a good, a good uh, mix of fintech, MTOs, and, uh, and, and bankers. I think the, the, the solution, um, to your point, is, is a combination of everybody working together. Um, I think from the banker's perspective, they want to get a piece of, of, you know, of their remittance revenues, et cetera, but then they just cannot bank these low, low end and have them come to the, to the branch, okay? At the same time for the MTOs, they see a lot of, of the, 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 the customers are moving to having Androids and mobile phones, et cetera. And then for, for the FinTech, there's also opportunities for us to come in and partner with these, with these existing players to kind of take the whole industry to the next level. I think the, 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 real, the real enemy in the room um, is not ourselves, it's cash, right? Everybody's, you know, they feel cash. It's, it's, you know, they, they want to have that cash in their hand. So they get paid electronically, they stick their ATM card, get the cash, they walk into the MTO, and it costs them, you know, time and money, and there's a lot of issues of them handling the cash and taking the cash and sending it. So to digitize the process, okay, from, from the bank, because the bank usually owns the, the original deposits from the employers all the way down to the employee, but it doesn't end there. Also, from the other side, so what's happening now in India uh, with the demonetization uh, of, of their notes, uh, now it's creating a much easier way to send money because now the other side, instead of them receiving the money and then also going and getting in cash, now they can also receive that money in a digital way. So I think to answer your question, uh, does the market need more or less? I think we just need the right players to come in and partner with the existing the existing uh, ecosystem, and then everybody cannot take the whole the whole you know the whole end to end cycle. You just have to identify where you play and where you can contribute. But ultimately, you have you have established players and specifically banks that are going to have to change. They're going to have to embrace some of these technologies changes to the revenue streams, is, is that fair yeah. to say? Exactly, because what we have seen is that specifically on the uh, fintech side, it is like the gradual to sudden, because anything on the fintech, it looks very gradual, less threatening in the initial phase. And suddenly you find that is going to really transform the whole things. So that's the thing which you need to watch out, because you, know, you cannot take and wait for a strong signal to come in. Especially that's why the partnerships and also go behind the problems that we are searching for. And it's not that you, know, you come with a solution and then you look for what kind of problem you're going to fix it. So it's exactly the right partnership specifically and making sure that you embrace that. And that's a very critical element. Uh, here on the panel here, uh, Ziad has some experience in getting banks to embrace new technology. So as the, as the managing director of Quisk, you have a digital wallet solution and, and, and numerous other uh, um, uh, symbiotic technologies. And I know you've partnered with banks. Uh, maybe you can touch on your experience in getting banks to embrace this technology uh, uh, specifically related to the remittance space. Yes. Uh, so first, let me clarify one thing. We're not, uh, we're not a digital wallet, but we help wallets and bank accounts we enable them to do more transaction at the point of sale on, on ATMs and uh, as well as remittance. Now, um, me coming from the background uh, in 2003, um, I was part of the team who invented the NFC. Uh, and uh, we realized that uh, in 2006, me and my friend George, that if, if we're going to focus at one element of payment, uh, it, 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 we're not going to make enough money and the ecosystem is, was expensive at that time and there were no smartphones, etc. So we decided to flip it to, uh, we decided to start a new company, a new startup, uh, uh, which today called Quisk. Uh, and uh, part of it, we, what we offer is remittance. So um, uh, what we're trying to enable uh, basically is the whole digital experience from the front end where the end user or the customer receives his salary to the moment that he transfers it to the other end. So basically what we are offering banks is rather than the customer uh, at the other end when, when, uh, when he receives the money, rather than he goes to uh, the bank and uh, withdraw the money from the bank uh, itself, he can withdraw money directly from the ATM machine using his mobile number plus a pin after one-time registration. So um, it doesn't matter where the source of fund it is as long as you have a front end that can enable you to deal with cash flexibly, then it should be easy for the end user to, um, uh, to, to send money. So uh, today, when we look at M-Pesa and all the, those uh, uh, services, it's they're, they're actually limited because they work only with one network. 
where we are in Quisk today, when we give our solution, we give, a, we give it to multiple banks, uh, which is multiple issuers and multiple acquirers. So basically, a telecom can be an issuer with us as well as a bank can be an issuer with us. And then the settlement happens among them. It doesn't matter where the money is. Is it, is it coming out of a billing system at the telecom company or coming out of a bank account? Uh, for us, we give the tool uh, to those organizations to facilitate a better remittance system. And today, most of the challenges between banks and, uh, and telecom operators in terms of, let's say, low amount money transfer or payment is that their systems are not talking to each other. And um, the moment we figure out how these systems can talk to each other, then we will figure out the volume and, uh, and the system becomes overall efficient and agile. So the, what, what do you want? You don't want to make things complica complicated for the end user. Today, if I am a customer with M-Pesa and my brother is a customer of X bank, I cannot transfer the money to him using M-Pesa. So what we thought of using Quisk today is no matter where the money is, it should be transferred among the banks. Of course, in each country, we will have uh, uh, what we call a settlement bank who is going to settle among the telecoms and the banks themselves. So uh, we have learned from the market itself that um, it's, it's, uh, if, if you want to do something, you have to simplify it, like in Pesa, for example. And you have to make it digital for uh, cities, smart cities like Dubai, New York, London. So you have to offer it for both. So you have to offer for the low market, low end, which they have uh, a small amount of money to deal with on a daily basis. And for those who, who think that they are, you know, fintech and, and, and more secure and big amount of monies they, that they, they want to transfer. So uh, through, uh, through our partners, we were trying today to offer uh, these uh, services. Uh, so for us, in, in, as a Quisk, we realize where is the problem is and we try to sort it out uh, for uh, exchange houses, telecom companies, and banks as well. So you touched on, on offering a, a simple, <laughs> easy to use, digital solution to cash that is accessible to all segments of the market, from the high net worth individuals to the unbanked. Cool. Yeah. So, so, so that's it. So that, that leads me to a question for you, Nabil. So as, as I'm not going to speak for five minutes, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it's all good. As the CEO of QPay, that's what you do. You offer a, a simple, easy to use digital solution to cash for largely the unbanked. So how do you take the next step to the remittance space? So, so that, that's a good question. You know, first of all, I mean, you know, my objective in, in this panel is just going to share our experience and kind of help the, the ecosystem because, like I said, we, we see the opportunity here of us attacking cash, and that's, that's what this whole event is all about. Um, so what we've done with, with QPay is that we focused on <clears throat> technically banking the unbanked, so offering them a turnkey solution, giving them an IBAN, follow the rules of the Qatar uh, Central Bank with a WPS, which is a little bit different than it is in, in UAE, where every employee must have a bank account. So if we attacked it from giving an employee an actual bank account. Okay. Once we got them to use a bank account, and the next thing is, okay, what do we do now in partnership with a bank? So we work with five, six banks in Qatar. We extend their, their model and say, okay, what can we do now for, for us to help that employee to the next level now that they're banked? And of course, you know, the remittance becomes a, a key component. Now, how do you make it simple? So partner with the local, with the local uh, exchange houses to enable them to, to you know, send money. Some of them are not comfortable uh, you know, using, using us, you know, even though we, you think, okay, you have, you know, half a million plus customers, some of them still want to go to UAE Exchange. So they go to UAE Exchange and they, they you know, they transact at a POS or at the ATM and then send their money. So for us, it's more of an approach of kind of looking at the holistic experience. And then the other thing is who receives the money from the other side. So we work with a bank uh, uh, called UBL, United Bank Limited. UBL is a Pakistani bank. Pakistan has a PRI, which is uh, called the Pakistan Remittance Initiative. So Pakistan as a country, if you send money into Pakistan, okay, for every $100, or if anything over $100, Pakistani government will give you $7 back. Okay? Why? Because they want that foreign money so they can buy oil and gas and all this, you know, it's a hard currency. So we work with UBL, we, you know, and we uh, simplify that process for them. So this is, this is our, you know, strategy is to kind of be a, a member of the ecosystem and kind of help uh, in digitizing and also help our partners. Okay, okay, and I think we just have time for one, one last question, which I wanted to ask uh, you, Pramoth. So, UAA Exchange, um, 
incredible name, very well known, one of the biggest players in the written space globally, I believe. You have a presence in 45 countries? 45 countries. 45 countries, right? Here in the UAE, if you close your eyes and you throw a stone, you might hit a UAE exchange. I think you've got 146 outlets around the country, am I right? 150. One, uh, you have 150 on. outlets around the UAE, so you have this incredible bricks and mortar presence and you're very much a trusted uh, brand to, you, to your customers. But my question is, in 2017, I still have to physically go to a branch to send money. So, so I guess the question is, where is the tech in this fin, if you will? What's the future direction? See, I think the, the, the tech for us is in all the three. The first mile, the last mile, and the whole process. It's not that you cannot look at the tech only on the one channel alone. Uh, if you look at it, depending upon each of the market, the maturity of adopting the tech in the first mile, the last mile in the process varies. A market like UAE, on the first mile, we are yet to see that, but quite a lot happening on the process. For example, the, our, the prepaid program that we have done where we have made the foreign currency cashless, we have made it into plastic. We have got close to half a million cards on go cash. We have bring the board dust technology. Oh, look at the WPS, it's completely carded. 85% of the disbursal is completely carded on to do that. So that's a tech in, in terms of the process. On the last mile, you know, you look at, you know, substantially in distribution across the payments, the cash distribution of money transfer is merely 18%. The 82% is non-cash. It could be to a bank account, it could be to a prepaid wallet, it could be to the M-Pesa, you, you name it, you, you name the kind of distribution that we have. But when you go to some other markets, say for example, I want to bring a market like GCC, you know, we have got service where you can, Qatar, in, if you look go to Qatar, we are able to offer the online solution because in the market in UAE currently, the biggest impediment for us is the payment gateway. We are not able to realize it. In terms of product, the online is available. It's up and running in 12 markets across the globe from US, UK, Australia, Europe, in Qatar, in Bahrain, but not in UAE. So it's not the question of, it's a question of having the right mature payment uh, a realization gateway for us to activate that. But that's not the end because this is a continuous journey. So you need to find tech in all the three, the first mile, the process, as well as in the last mile. Great discussion. I wish we had time for questions. Unfortunately, we don't. We've got to keep the program moving. I've really enjoyed this, gentlemen. Thank you so much for coming. Can we have a round of applause for Pramoth Bangat, CEO UA Exchange, Nabil bin Issa, CEO QPay International Corporation, and Ziad Al-Shabaki, Managing Director of Quisk. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you so much.